the attendees that may be on different platforms to utilize the chat box um, that uh, is available to you for comments and questions um, on any aspect of this discussion. This discussion is not a discussion that happens just between the speakers and proudly South African, but it's for you. Uh, it's for businesses who have logged in this morning um, and, and consumers um, alike who may be keen to find out how we're going to shape things up again as we go along. Uh, just to mention that that opening scene that you saw is um, the Proudly South African Rebuild campaign supported by the SABC. It was our very quick response uh, as we saw uh, when the when the looting and the and the and the unfortunate unrest happened two weeks ago. I mean, two days into it, we had to come up with a, a quick, impromptu, um, you know, a, a communication strategy. Because as you can imagine, in the context of what was going on, uh, it was important for the voice of proudly South African to be heard uh, from an economy perspective, from a job uh, loss uh, perspective, from a job creation perspective, and the and from the, the the reality that those unfortunate events, uh, you know, took us like many steps back uh, to what we were already uh, fighting uh, for or fighting with, which is the the the, the pandemic that has done, you know. Uh, this really has caused major damage to our economy and to jobs and all of that. So those riots and looting was really just uh, uh, the final nail in the coffin, so to speak. Uh, but with that said, I thought I'd give you a bit of background, you know, in terms of the, of the opening scene that you saw. That campaign is still currently on SABC platforms, SABC 1, 2 and 3 for the rest of the month, because we are really just trying to say to South Africans, we are here now. We have seen what has happened. And uh, the question is, what are we going to do together to rebuild our economy? And in this context, to rebuild our townships, uh, especially those that were affected the most in the Gauteng region and KZN. We are here, we have stood in solidarity before as a people uh, in the midst of trouble. Uh, we can walk hand in hand again and, and fix what is broken, so to speak. Um, all right, so with that said, uh, I'd like to kick off with the official part of the program and uh, to introduce you to our first speaker who is going to let us in on what his department, on how rather, his department has empowered youth uh, in township and, and just really let us in on the programs that they are busy with uh, for the benefit of um, entrepreneurs and businesses in the township. And he is uh, no stranger to us. He's a friend of the campaign. Before the, the, the pandemic, we used to do great things together. Uh, his name is Mr. Baba. Uh, you know, there's a bit of Tswana in me, and I apologize profusely if I butchered your surname. But um, Baba is the acting CEO uh, at the Houting Tourism Authority. Always a pleasure to see you, Baba. Uh, welcome to our webinar this morning and thank you for your time. Um, the mic is yours. Thank you. Um, th thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Program Director. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm audible. Um, quite excited to be uh, uh, joining in the program, um, especially at these trying times when um, our country, as we've indicated, went through traveling two weeks uh, of unfortunate incidents that had a direct impact on the brand reputation of the country. I am from the Houghton Tourism Authority, an organization charged with the responsibility of marketing Gauteng as a competitive global city region um, in the space of visitor economy, but we also incorporate investment, trade, and we are also looking at how we build a competitive creative economy in our space. So I'm quite excited to be joining this platform. 
Um, just to kickstart, as this is about building, rebuilding, um, in the aftermath of um, the past two weeks, but also in the aftermath or in the current context of an economy that is not growing, um, ravaged severely by COVID-19 uh, with youth unemployment at its highest, um, we certainly need to be inspired by this Eisenhower code about us as individuals, as activists, as change agents, as beings, as agencies, our purpose is to build, rebuild, and build again. Therefore, the building process doesn't just start and stop. The building progress is in our communities, is in our organizations, is in our neighborhoods, is in our townships. Um, and it gives us this opportune moment to rebuild and build uh, again. But in the context of the Houghton province, um, and, um, and, I'll, and I'll touch it on it later on, but the nature of the task at hand requires us to input and engage from a variety of multiple role players as customers, as people-centric economy, to really refocus and get our township economy to be most resilient, to be robust, and most importantly, to be developmental. And the benefits gained by focusing on building are massive. They are transformative, they are authentic and long lasting. And if we infuse building in everything that we do, we'll be able to sustain uh, long-term effects um, and also use that building within an authentic experience. Our work um, in the Houghton Tourism Authority and broadly in the GPG family uh, I've seen colleagues Matopani and Saki here, they will touch more on part of the policy imperative, but from the Howden Tourism Authority point of view, our work is to both influence national and provincial spatial planning and economic recovery agenda and make sure that it's insight driven and data uh, analytic focused, um, primarily because Houghton accounts to almost 33% of the national GDP a whopping 33% of the national GDP and just under 10% of Africa's GDP. Therefore, it's very important that this recovery process is led by this massive province. Primarily because as we always say, when Houghton catches the cold, the entire country sneezes. And we have seen through various acts and um, therefore for us to be able to start firstly prepare venting further job losses to securing the current jobs and starting to create innovative solution to bring in you know, new innovative uh, jobs. We will need firstly to defend uh, this specific whopping contribution to the GDP. And at the heart of this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's our townships, uh, it's our neighborhoods. I want us to also draw inspiration from Will Durant when we say we must forget about the mistake, we must forget about the failures, forget about everything that we are doing that we, and just focus on today and what we are going to be doing right now. And we must just do it because it's your lucky day. And today, inspired by this quote, we are on this platform hoping to invigorate and rejuvenate all our township products, experiences, our communities, to be able to look at today as a new day and start a, a rebuilding. And we're rebuilding in the context of six of the 10 biggest townships in South Africa of the top 10 are found in Gauteng. Therefore, if we want to talk about township economic revitalization, recovery, rebuilding, Houghton needs to be at the center of this. Of these six townships that make the top 10, they account to almost 3.2 million of the population of Houghton. Just out of the six township alone, we, if we are focused, if we engender programs that leverage on the scale and these numbers, will be able to make a dent. Therefore, it's not surprising that the Growing Houghton Together Vision 2030, it's 
biased towards our township, is biased towards our neighborhoods. Uh, the sprawling metropolis of Soweto, which I call it, is a metropolis on its own. Uh, the township of Tembisa, Katliho, Shoshanguve, Mamelodi, um, and Sebokeng represents the, uh, the six townships that are part of the top 10 biggest townships in the country. But from the Houghton tourism point of view, I just wanted to take uh, members through this um, uh, perspective in terms of what is our key focus here. We are, as we market the destination as a competitive city region for Bledger, uh, and Bledger is both business and ledger, we're looking primarily at ledger, business events, and lifestyle. From a leisure point, point of view, and with us having close to 14 million residents in our province, our focus is on domestic tourism and encouraging locals to be tourists in their own backyard. It's encouraging all of you whom majority are residing in our golden province to be tour guides, to know your backyard, and to be able to take your visitors to proudly uh, South African township-based uh, uh, facilities. There's nothing wrong with expensive restaurants and expensive steak at Centin, but there's something authentic about our township eateries and foods and the like. So take a short break, uh, take a short left to our townships, uh, become a champion host um, and know what is in your backyard and don't become a boring host. It's a key message that you are driving on Ledger, uh, breaking the ground, making sure that you are able to facilitate uh, this visitation. So we are looking forward to see young, energetic, new tour operators, uh, those that organize high tea parties for their friends, those that are now able to migrate into a DMC, destination marketing company, businesses of organizing tours and experiences. All those will be underpinned by the breathtaking experience in our nature and uh, man-made features um, our combination of um, paleo science, our combination of um, uh, issues in the Dinokian game reserve of our big five, but at the heart of it is the humanity which starts here, which underpin the soul of us in South Africa. But how are we doing that? We are using storytelling as a platform and the central message is share my GP. It's my GP because it's embedded in the humanity it's embedded in our own. In the business uh, uh, side of events where the opportunities are also there, I'll touch on, on them on later, but we are also encouraging business breakaways, companies that have been joining in here. You have been in cabin fever for a while now. We are encouraging you to use our facilities, our nature reserves for your breakaway sessions, for your strategic planning sessions. And we want to have youngsters that are able to develop these itineraries, package this, offer it in a digital platform and enable corporates, proud South African members and everybody else to utilize our high-tech technology, to utilize these facilities and build our MICE uh, uh, facilities. And this we say hashtag Houghton means business. But I guess, again, we will not be talking about Houghton, Kwadonga, Siadu, Majosi Maboning, if we are not talking about lifestyle. We are a lifestyle destination. We are Africa's mecca of entertainment and lifestyle. And it's clearly shown in our positioning where we are promoting shopping experiences. We are promoting our cosmopolitan uh, people, the LGBTIQ plus community, which is at the heart of our lifestyle, high energy, pulsive. Uh, we are also looking at globally being competitive with the, with, the, with the key focus on the city of Johannesburg uh, influence in the world as an inspirational uh, uh, destination while leveraging partnerships through uh, platforms like these and, and many others. And this is where you see creative GP at its best with some of the best innovation coming out of our townships, which we are supporting through a platform called hashtag GP lifestyle. So in a nutshell, if you are to ask us what are the core essence and strategic positioning of our marketing activities, they are summarized in these three uh, four slides. I'll go straight into some of the Houghton Tourism Authority Township economic building efforts. The first thing that I spoke about is the 
the campaign and the drive we're putting on positioning ourselves as Africa's creative hub, um, leveraging on the creative economy and the tourism culture. We are not tradi a traditional tourism destination or a lifestyle destination, but we do have the mountains in, Ma in Mahalis. We do have a little uh, beach uh, uh, in, 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 in the cradle of humankind um, where people are able to, uh, to go to Happy Island. Um, so we have these types of experiences that have been built, but at the heart of this creative uh, economy is our lifestyle, it's our experiences, our spaces and places. Uh, just a month ago, um, uh, the neighborhood uh, in Johannesburg um, was voted as the coolest street um, uh, uh, neighborhood. Um, uh, just in, 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 in Johannesburg here, uh, by, by a leading United States magazine. Um, this is primarily because of how youngsters have taken the creative space uh, and utilize it to draw in, in, in visitation. Opportunities exist here. We're looking forward to uh, partnering with young creative minds in generating uh, content that tells the destination story, content that doesn't just sell, but the content that tells the story the content that is imbued uh, in the minds and aspirations of our of, of our young people, we are looking forward to films, stories, uh, storybooks, and and a variety of content that is just about my GP. And as we do this, like I've said, we are influencing what the national agenda should uh, should be. Another interesting aspect, and we will say. Um, 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 1994 brought us a new genre in the music in the form of quieto. Some of us uh, are that old to uh, have been part of that uh, musical evolution that represented the soundtracks of our life. But currently the youngsters uh, and our musical experiences are imbued in this musical genre of, of, of Ama Piano. And we are proudly and apologetic uh, locating this genre in our sprawling townships. Uh, the township of Katlehorn, the township of Emamilodi, the township of Soweto, Alex, uh, they are all contesting that they are the home of Ama Piano. But we say Oksalayo, Kokota GP is the home of Ama Piano. And we're looking at those that could have not made it as producers of or Ama Piano DJs. We have a pre training program where we will be rolling out in our key townships where we train them as tour guide. We will be launching in our Ama Piano route that takes visitors and locals on a musical journey, how this genre evolved, where are the joints where you can enjoy this, but also what are some of the memorabilia and actual real life experiences. And those will be coming from the authentic voices and sounds of Ama Piano uh, from uh, 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 from, from our townships. We are also looking at our food security, but also looking at the gastronomy and the foodies as a key component of a thriving visitor economy and a thr thriving township experience. The six townships that I spoke about and many others in Gauteng are a hive of activity with sprawling restaurants, uh, township eateries. We are located within the group Department of Economic Development and Agriculture and Rural Development. And in the context of this, we are working with the Department of Agriculture in looking at small scale farmers, how we can help them access the market through some of these restaurants, through a program we call Houting Eats. Houting Eats is our positioning on how we position the destination as a food experience uh, uh, from uh, the Briani experience um, uh, in, in the heart of uh, Johannesburg to the Spato in Alexander, to the Baguena, Akumamilodi. These are our indigenous township food. But to what extent has this been digitalized, been put into uh, all these commercial apps where people are able to order? We're looking forward to an opportunity to partner with existing channels where we mainstream this. We have already listed six of the township-based restaurant into our Gauteng is digital 
a program where we will encourage you to use it to um, uh, be able to order, but also to be able to brand this in the context of our destination uh, branding. So opportunities exist there to look into the food tourism space and how uh, we could leverage it. We're also looking forward to having an, a, a you as uh, our, our um, um, uh, audiences, uh, uh, those that uh, support the experience here in our townships to join in hands as we introduce to the market what we call the township restaurant golden plug uh, grading. Um, who, who says we can have our own Michelin type kind of grading for our township restaurants? We are going ahead with the Golden Stars um, a, a plugging program. We hope to join hands with um, a, a, a Proudly South African um, and, and, and other entities in piloting this in Gauteng. And we hope it will go to all the other townships because our eateries are of good quality. But quality assurance and consistent provision of good quality experiences is what separates the Golden Stars from the rest. As a golden province, we'll be rolling out this, and I think this will be crucial as we go every time working in, co in collaboration with the Restaurant Association of South Africa and the township-based restaurant associations. We'll be looking forward to this program where uh, we have regular monitors that goes out and check on the experiences uh, through digital technologies. Again, the video and digital technology opportunities through our uh, content is a key focus for us. We urge everybody to join in. We are running competitions on the stories, my image in Gauteng right now. If you go into our social uh, uh, channels, I love Gauteng and at Visit Gauteng on Twitter, you'll be able to see a campaign where you are encouraged to share your moments in a various attractions and experiences in GP. The focus right now is on Constitution Hill, our breathtaking um, a museum at the heart of Johannesburg. Another opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, exists here and we are moving with full steam with the township hubs, um, economic, uh, tourism infrastructure upgrade and maintenance. And we're doing this through youth cooperatives and an opportunity exists for youth organizations in these townships to organize themselves. Let's take the Mamelodi experience. There is a Solomon Matlangu Memorial, Dr. Anton Rebeiro's house. There's the Solomon Matlangu home a family home, and there is the famous Jack Buddha restaurant there, all within the, the radius of five kilometers um, uh, where you can literally walk. These museums, uh, the Song Matangu Museum is not in a great state. Um, we are working with the city of Chuan to revamp it, but we are saying, instead of appointing just a contractor, let's get the youth based in Mamelodi who will get the machinery to upgrade this uh, facilities on a regular basis. We are cutting our lawns in our houses every week, but the museums in our townships uh, lawn gets cut once a year. We're saying that should be the responsibility of locals, organize themselves into youth cooperatives that get equipment through uh, collaboration with the likes of JEP. When the globes are off, they fix the globe, they don't fill in a form that goes to some officer in a government department and the officer takes another three weeks to fill in the form and authorize the repair of the bulb. They will have a digital technology to map, map in their stock takings. Uh, they will have an early warning system that tells them that this globe uh, is about to die in a month and they're able to look at the stock. That's how we envisage this problem. And we believe that with our creative mindset and the energy and the zeal in our youngsters, in our communities, will be able to roll out this project in Sharpville, in Mamelodi, will be able to roll it out in Mansonville, and will be able to roll it out in Sibukin. Again, ladies and gentlemen, our events um, uh, industry, which has been hard hit right now, presents an opportunity for young people, especially in our townships. We have community halls, we have uh, for example, in Soweto, the only township in the whole of South Africa that have a golf course, that have a, a theater. Uh, we want to expand this, but utilize these facilities to host our events underpinned by our housing events uh, strategy. 
that is anchored on the home of champion uh, positioning. Um, we have been hosting uh, BioBubble events uh, under a secure environment. We have been the champion host for this particular platform, but we want to extend this to our townships to use our community halls, the schools that have not been utilized to use them to house and incubate um, uh, these programs. We are proud to announce, we're proud to announce that one of our signature events, the Kyalami Nine Hour, has adopted a project uh, 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 at the heart of Johannesburg, uh, where we will be revamping one of the township-based uh, spinning circuit at Orange Farm, in association with the Kyalami Nine Hour, to build in a state-of-the-art race track uh, and spinning facility to formalize the spinning of cars, working with the AIDC to make sure that this is a leverage to the benefit of the township. So events and competitive global events located in our townships like your Makelani festivals offers us an opportunity to replicate this across our sprawling townships and support uh, SMEs across the value chain. But we're not just organizing and hosting lifestyle parties, sporting events. We're also looking at key strategic events, conferences and exhibitions in our 10 high growth sectors uh, that colleagues uh, uh, will, will speak to. But this is how focused and direct our interventions are. We're looking at agro-processing, we're looking at the cannabis industry, we're looking at creative economy, manufacturing, uh, we're, we're, we're looking at business process outsourcing, the financial sector. Uh, and these are the 10 growth sectors that underpins the growing Houghton Together uh, Vision 2030. And as I conclude, um, we are also through the Houghton uh, Harangua Hotel School, uh, which is based in Harangua, one of our townships in the province. We are training graduates, uh, foodies, chefs, uh, hospitality uh, uh, capacity. And we want to be pairing, we want to pair this school with our major attractions. There's absolutely no reason that we're able to produce graduates from Harangua Hotel School, but they are unable to find expression and their work at the Soweto Hotel. Right now, due to COVID, uh, this is one of the flagship hotels in our township that had to shut down. And through new uh, venture capitals, working with JEP and other finance institutions, we're looking at reviving this, getting new owners um, to be able to run these uh, hotels, but leveraging on the uh, skills uh, from, from the sector, working together with the UJ, Hospitality Academy and other township based facilities, skills um, uh, for the sector is crucial. And to get South Africans to understand that it's not a low uh, paying job, it's not a directory thing to work at the restaurant, to work in the hospitality industry, as we know, right now is quite dominated by uh, uh, foreigners. Therefore, a clarion call to our youngsters and say, this is an important aspect as you rebuild your people skills, your engagement skills, and just proudly South African skills that is imbued in our Ubuntu and our demeanor. The hospitality sector provides you with that opportunity with very little uh, barriers for entry. Therefore, our clarion call is for everyone, especially our youngsters, to look into this sector. We'll be looking at an uptake this financial year of 3,000 a youth to be placed across our various hotels. That is why it's very important to adhere to COVID protocols, do everything so that we can travel and revisit again so that these youngsters can get an opportunity. This is supported through, again, our Tourism Safety Monitors Program, where youngsters linked to the community policing forums, vetted by SAPS, are now placed in key tourist hotspots to serve as information officers, but early warning system that links up to our uh, a visitor recourse and uh, a system. Uh, a sprawling metropolis like Gauteng um, uh, get everybody in here, but through the success of an, a street like Villagazi Street, when you uh, see people at Villagazi Street and somebody snatches a wallet from a visitor, is the same people at Villagas Street that are going to apprehend uh, that rogue, primarily because they have seen the benefits of tourism in that street. Therefore, with the presence of these youth monitors, we hoped to deal with the perception of our destination being crime ridden, but we are also looking forward to have communities 
and our products and experiences joining hands in, 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 in partnering. Enthusiasm is, is common, ladies and gentlemen, but at the heart of it, endurance is rare. And at this moment where we are right now in our efforts to rebuild our economy, in our efforts to use our township as a key driver of these rebuilding processes, we just cannot survive with just enthusiasm. We need endurance, we need to build and rebuild again. And counting is ready to lead this country's re economic recovery effort. We are ready to provide proudly South African local solution for global uh, 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 challenges, what we call uh, local. Thank you very much. Thank you so, so much, Baba, for such an insightful, uh, well-packaged uh, presentation that you've just made. Um, I do want to acknowledge the fact that there is um, a comment or an, a question on the chat line from Tamsanga Makubela. Uh, Tamsanga, I, uh, like they would say in parliament, I recognize you, comrade. I will, <laughs> I recognize you. There's also a comment for Baba on Facebook. We will take, um, we will take the, 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 the questions and comments when we do have, when we do our questions and answers uh, session, because I wanna give the other speakers an opportunity to present as well, but we will, we are, we are aware of your comments. But with that said, Baba, I must say that the, your department has a bumper packed, as bumper packed programs. Uh, just like you've always have, uh, but I also want to acknowledge the fact that because you will play mostly in the tourism, domestic tourism space, uh, it, we all know that the industry has been hard hit uh, by 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 COVID, um, and this is why the, the you know the events of last year were really just the last thing, the last thing that we truly need because it makes your job as a department twice as hard. But, um, you know, encouraging to see your rebuilding efforts because you're right, you know, we now know what happened. Let's not reprimand anybody. What are we going to do with it now? We are here now, how do we move forward? And I'm glad that, you know, part of your presentation did focus on that in terms of what is it that we that we do? What, what, what is it that we're going to do now? Uh, your top 10 township in, townships in Gauteng uh, that you, you know, shared with us, reminds me of a webinar we had last week with Dr. Mike Nguna. Uh, the, 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 the webinar was about how do we rebuild, reset and renew. And, um, you know, Dr. Mike Nguna is a founder and chairperson of a group called Masingita, a group. Um, and he and, and, and his uh, a, a group owns quite a few uh, malls in the township. And some of those malls were gutted, were you know uh, looted, and 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 uh, you know during that uh, unrest period two weeks ago. And he was saying to us last week that the job loss element of it is massive. Uh, you know, he was talking about between eight thousand and twelve thousand people have lost their jobs in just two or three uh, uh, um, uh, uh, malls, including Barra Mall. And he was quantifying that by saying it's not only the people that are employed by him uh, as an owner of the of the um, uh, by his company rather as an owner of the shopping centers, but it's about the 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 the, the, the tenants who are in the shopping centers, the likes of all small businesses, all big businesses that you have in the center, people that are employed by them. But it's also the value chain behind all of that, you know, the logistics and all of that. But then he just also touched on a very important aspect of it, which came out quite nicely in your presentation, that we, we seem to disregard the informal business. But the hawkers that sit outside a shopping center that would sell uh, amaguinia or they sell amakipkip, we call it amaskopas, we know. I mean, every time I drive home to Soweto, make sure that I make a stop somewhere to buy at least five packets of scopas so I can, you know, snack on them uh, when I get back home. Those type of, you know, he was making reference to that, that even those people, if a shopping center is looted and bent or whatever the case may be, they also lose jobs because there's no traffic going into, into the township. 
Um, so, so you know, and, and I suppose we can't underplay the damage that was done, but but there's many ways to fix it. I mean, you know, the fact that you are a, your organization is also selling South Africa, uh, Houteng rather as a tourism destination, but from a lifestyle perspective, which speaks to what we do as proudly South African. We also sell the campaign as a lifestyle thing. It's about, you know, the restaurants that are local that you shared with us. And this is why we like your golden stars grading program. Don't forget us when the time comes as proudly South African. But also, you know, for us, it's a lifestyle thing. It's about the cars that are assembled locally, right? It's about the clothes we wear, the music we listen to. You made reference to, uh, you know, access to market opportunities like Delicious Festival that we are, you know, involved in. It's about access to market for small businesses, but it's a lifestyle. You know, we're talking about, like I said, furniture we have in our home, uh, smartphones we use, this local smartphones. Um, the list is just endless. And all of these things we can find uh, in the in, in our you know in our townships. And which is which is um, very important to then, like you said, you know, encourage you know, people that we are talking to on this platform to do a bit of a tour to our own townships, you know, before we even try to sell it to anybody else in an effort to expose um, the kind of business that happens in township, the economy, the value chain, the households that are being taken care of. A few weeks ago, a few months ago, we went, I personally went on a township tour, if you like, with another friend of the campaign, Tebe Igalafe. We started off with breakfast where we bought, we went to Deep Loof and we bought Maguenya and sorted ourselves out and we ate and shared with everybody when we could, when it was safe to do so. We ended up going to theses in, in Mufulo to go buy t-shirts and sporty uh, bucket hats. And we ended up going to, I mean, we went everywhere just to kind of like walk the talk, right? Uh, uh, walk the talk. I do want to find out from you, though, uh, Baba, for the you know, in the for the benefit of people who are listening, how do township uh, businesses uh, that may be online today access some of your programs? Um, you know, is there is what's the what's the the easiest way to do and to to you know to get in touch with your department to try and work with them? No, thanks. Um, we, we, we have a direct line. So we, we work with uh, associations. Um, so uh, the sector is a bit organized. So um, there's the uh, women in tourism, uh, um, there is the youth in tourism transformation. Uh, there is the tourism association. So with tourism association, Mamelodi tourism associations. So there's that formal part where we work directly with organized formations, we have regular sessions. Um, our, our, our work is customer centric and stakeholder led because we don't own these products. They are owned by the, the, the individuals. Uh, our work is to aggregate, agglomerate and, and use the economics of scale to have massive impact on, on that. But we also, uh, they can reach us through our social media channels uh, I love Gauteng at, on Facebook at Visit Gauteng on Twitter. Uh, we are uh, open. Uh, our numbers uh, are, are, are there. They can reach us. Uh, but we will also be rolling out this platform, uh, hopefully, and I, I should not actually hope we will be doing it with you uh, as we go out in, in, in our communities, the great creative GPs to unearth the, the creative minds. Uh, where we populate our shop and our online shop, where we create a platform. So you have all these disparate uh, measures of selling in our townships. We are almost creating a, an aggregated platform on our website uh, where we will be selling on their behalf, absorbing their marketing costs. And that is our contribution to their, their, their marketing efforts. They'll get their 100% uh, uh, revenue uh, from us who are using state resources to build this super platform that is aggregated uh, with a, a proudly South African guidelines with the local content uh, framework guiding us on what, what to do. So we're looking forward to have them coming in uh, to share uh, 
in their experience, they can reach us and formal businesses will be using formal structures to continue our engagement. Thanks. Thank, thank you so much, Baba. Uh, I'm hoping that you are able to still stay on in the, in, 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 in the chat for longer. I want us to tackle a question around uh, how do you measure your success? As, as a department, uh, you know, I think that's an important question that somebody has asked. But thank you so much for the insights. Really, really appreciate it. I'll have a chat with you again uh, shortly, um, you know, after all our speakers have presented. Thank you so much. With that said, I did say earlier on that we will have a questions and answer session later on, but there is a, a question or a comment that is bugging me a little bit. And I want to deal with it quickly now before our next speaker, because I don't want Nobushe, who's asking this question, to, uh, you know, to, to, to log off. Uh, because she's, uh, you know, she may be thinking that this is specifically a Houding discussion. No, we said this is not a Houding discussion. It's, it's not exclusive to businesses in Houding. Uh, you know, the first presentation uh, focused on Houding uh, in general, but I must assure you that all the, you know, uh, the speakers coming after, uh, uh, you know, uh, going forward will make, um, you know, uh, uh, references to other townships um, around the country as well in terms of the programs that they run. But I also want to assure you that when we do the proudly South African uh, presentation that's coming up uh, in the program, we will demonstrate to you that we are a national campaign and we will demonstrate to you how, uh, which different touch points we use to be able to help any business anywhere in the country because we're a national campaign and we, we work closely with members that may be anywhere in the country, uh, including Cape Town, which is where you were, you are rather, which is where you are logging on from. Thank you so much. Um, with that said, I'd like now to welcome our second speaker uh, onto the program uh, today. And um, may I please request that you switch your camera on, uh, Mr. Matopane Masha, uh, Senior Manager, Inclusive Economy, economy the from the Department of Economic Development. And um, Mr. Masha will be focusing on areas such as, you know, promoting manufacturing and productive, productive activities, rather, promoting manufacturing and productive activities, um, and, 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 and just letting us off in on, on what some of the programs they have in place and how you as an entrepreneur, as an SMME or as a small business access those, uh, those, those platforms. Uh, welcome, Mr. Masha, please go ahead. We look forward to hearing from you. Uh, good morning, good morning. Uh, uh... Happy and the and the colleagues, uh, but also good morning to everybody who has joined uh, this this very important webinar. Um, as as mentioned, my name is Matopani Masha uh, from the Department of Economic Development in Gauteng. So basically, I think what we'll be doing is just to share uh, some of the uh, recent initiatives that we are putting in place, just to make sure that we reboot uh, the township economy, but also. We focus on 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 areas, programmatic interventions that will help us uh, ensure that uh, our programs have socioeconomic impact, but also we are able to stimulate uh, through structured support uh, manufacturing, especially light manufacturing in the township, but also how we use we're trying to use technology to try and make sure that we link uh, township uh, townships to real opportunities as well. Um, as you as you can imagine, um, so so. This will just be a quick uh, uh, presentation, uh, but I will build a lot on examples uh, so that um, a lot of what I'm, I'm sort of capturing here will sort of resonate with uh, everybody on this webinar. Uh, and that, that, that will just be a, a table of contents as, as, as um, um, part of the, of, the, of the presentation. So just to say that um, in Gauteng, we introduced the Township Economy uh, Program in 2014, and, and we've lot, made a lot of strides in a lot of areas. Uh, for example, we've managed to do refurbishment of infrastructure, we've managed to support uh, SMEs in the township that are manufacturing different products, from paint to you know, products in arts and crafts, and, and, and many of them, but however, what we've picked up is that um, we, uh, for us to really move into the next level in terms of the implementation of our programs, 
we are always sort of faced up with what we call um, a regulatory failure. So, so which is a bit of a, 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 a challenge for us. So we, what we then did was that we also conducted a bit of a lot of surveys just to try and understand the type of business that we find in the township and some of the most pressing needs that they have. Uh, and, and therefore, as a result, we, we have um, um, decided as, a, as the province that we definitely need to intervene differently. Otherwise, the same situation in the township will remain. Um, and, I, and I think I'll get into, into some of those now. One is that there are a lot of legal barriers. At the moment in our country, or at least in Gauteng, we are using the same rules that we use to manage, for example, uh, businesses in what you call maybe uh, much more developed areas. We use the same rules to sort of try and manage a business in the township. And that is where the failure is because there this these different types of businesses uh, and they're also at different stages of, of development. So, so the question was then what do we do to make sure that um, we try and really address some of these gaps. Uh, you also know that in 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 Gauteng, at least uh, between seventy to eighty percent of our our businesses in the township are informal, and that means that only ten percent of the businesses that are in the township are able to have, uh, access any form of formal, you know, uh, either partnership or formal market access opportunities. So so meaning that if if as a country we want to position SMEs as the creators of jobs uh, and so forth. We will definitely need to focus a lot on the on the uh, seventy to eighty percent uh, informal uh, businesses that we, we we find in the township, and you know that the the trend globally is that uh, a lot of jobs are created uh, by you know small businesses and so forth. Uh, so 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 we, we definitely uh, need to in to intervene there. So so I think um, and as a result um, in the in, in the past uh, year uh, the province introduced the, what we call the township economy uh, development uh, uh, bill. Uh, obviously, it will become an act uh, soon uh, once this this process is, is, is completed. But one, and basically uh, to try and, and and provide for the promotion and development of township economy to make sure that there's conducive environment for that purpose. But also, uh, you know, uh, streamline and simplify user and licensing of township-based enterprises. Uh, also introducing a, a, a fund, uh, which I, I, I think uh, uh, the CEO will talk a bit about it later. But also try and intervene where, and as it relates to issues around um, the role of municipalities, especially bylaws, because that's where uh, a lot of our issues also are, were found to to be affecting uh, businesses negatively. So, so pretty much, um, and this we believe will help us do a lot of things, including where we're able to provide, for example, or intervene where we enable the manufacturing in the township uh, uh, to take off as well. So just to say that in terms of what we want to introduce in the bill is that we want to provide an enabling business environment. Uh, we want to make sure that we facilitate uh, proper market access opportunities for businesses in the township, but also ensure that they, we, we formalize and, in, and, and upgrade, uh, also uh, upgrading of informal business as well. So our, our view here is that um, the, a lot of uh, businesses that are, are, are categorized as informal, uh, a lot of them obviously, uh, some uh, we understand that they do it by choice because there is a bit of a cost in formalizing. So however, what we are introducing in, in terms of this legislation is what we call a lower rung of formality, where, for example, which basically lessens the cost. Uh, so basically introducing a, 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 a sort of a, a phase in terms of the process of formalizing. Uh, and I think that is very important because otherwise what we'll then continue to have is, is these two groups that, uh, you know, um, and that not necessarily help us in terms of uh, driving our job creation uh, interventions. So what are we what are we planning to do? Just to say that we we are introducing this this uh, very important and groundbreaking piece of legislation to change how uh, townships are reg regulated and governed, to make sure that we uh, transform them into zones of widespread job creation, you know, um, uh, pockets, um, and and this will be done in many ways. And for us, really, one is that we want to simplify a business licensing processes, we lower compliance costs. But also we encourage investment in a lot of areas, including uh, broadband and fiber uh, investment in the township. As you know that this, and especially the broadband fiber infrastructure, is really uh, one of the of, of the areas that we believe that uh, can really stimulate a lot of investment in the township. 
given the opportunities that it will bring. Um, and and we, 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 we are already working on a lot of these uh, initiatives in the, as a province. Secondly, we also want to set up better procurement rules uh, and programming su pro programmatic support so that we can be able to do a couple of things. One is that in using public procurement as a, as a lever, we want to be able to intervene in many areas. One is that we want to be able to cluster enterprises in the townships so that we can enable delivery. Well, what do you mean by that? Um, you will know that in most of the of the enterprises in the townships as individuals, um, as Kony, Kony Bakery, for example, they are not necessarily able to support or at least service larger contracts. So even when there's an opportunity for them, whether it's through supply chains that pick and pay, the local pick and pay or any other platform, these guys may struggle to meet the, the contractual obligations because of the of their of their production capacity. So, so what we are saying is that we need to provide for a clustering of a clustering where, for example, uh, as a group, uh, as a cluster, these enterprises are able to sort of, you know, uh, supply these uh, products or these goods uh, in, 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 in bulk, uh, for example. And this applies to construction firms. Uh, this applies to agro processing, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in enterprises, but also manufacturing of detergents and many other products that we find in the townships. But what we know is that as individual businesses, these businesses will not necessarily be able to, to, to manage some of the volumes that are required by the big retailers and so forth. So, so this is very important. And, 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 and I think uh, we, we, we believe that with, proper, with the support that we have in place, uh, funding support and, and also support in terms of accessing infrastructure, we'll be able to really uh, um, intervene uh, in this area in a, in a much more positive way. There are areas where we've already done a lot of work, where, for example, we've already clustered uh, township guys that are manufacturing uh, products like paint, uh, where, for example, as an individual, um, a, a SMME will not necessarily be able to, to supply uh, the volumes, for example, that are required by, by the big guys. Uh, so, 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 so that is very important intervention, which, which we are putting in place as, as a province. And this will be enabled through the, 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 the legislation that we are introducing as well. Uh, secondly, I will not necessarily dwell too much on this because I believe the, the, the CEO may also sort of touch a, a bit on this uh, when Saki comes in a bit later. But one, as a province, we are also introducing the what we call uh, the Township Partnership Fund, uh, which will basically, uh, you know, focus on a couple of areas uh, without necessarily going into details. One, obviously, it will be working capital for township-based enterprises. Uh, stock credit support for smaller SMMEs, uh, purchase order financing, but also as part of that, part of the products that will be introduced as well will be a product for, for township again, real estate, uh, the tax economy uh, uh, fund, but also a, a umbrella product for, for township uh, retailers as well. And what we are saying is that uh, as part of this, this, this fund, we want to, to basically providing wholesale funding and, and then we have a, a portfolio of, 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 of lenders that will be helping us in terms of, uh, you know, on lending uh, to enterprises in the township. Uh, but also we are arguing that we need to flip the script as well, where instead of using the conventional uh, way of assessing whether an SMME qualifies for funding, we need to use to flip and, and, and basically approach it a bit differently, where instead of looking and demanding things like uh, collateral upfront, but we use much more like uh, data to enable us to, uh, uh, you know, uh, determine the viability of a business. So, so those are some of the, of the things that we're introducing. Uh, basically, flip, flipping a script a bit in terms of uh, um, um, the, the 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 space at the moment in our country. As you know, that um, uh, if you are in the township and you're a business there already by just being there, your profiling in terms of risk, but also access to financing. Is a different story altogether. So, so if we don't necessarily intervene there, we, we don't see much uh, a lot of these changes. So, so that's what we, we why we are introducing this this fund. And, and I hope the CEO will will get into the technical details a bit later uh, as well. But also one of the interventions, as you know, that we 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 also are implementing what we call the taxi the taxi economy uh, program as a province where we. Are also what we are, we are saying is that we are enabling the industry, but also SMEs in this industry to be able to participate in the value chain. At the moment, in our country, taxi owners or operators 
only uh, participate at the end of the value chain, where they ferry a commuter from one point to the other. But there are a lot of opportunities in the value chain, including, for example, uh, components manufacturing, including you know supply of many other products uh, in in that space. And and I think uh, in, we are going to be working in partnership with the South Africa on this one. Uh, a lot of those interventions would include, for example, repurposing of old engines, and 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 these are enterprises that we will be supporting in the townships. Uh, you know where, where they will be doing this in partnership with Toyota and the taxi industry as well, but also including a lot of things uh, like, for example, uh, programs like uh, re recycling of of tires. As you know, that the taxi industry is the biggest consumer of tires in our country, uh, especially in our province. So 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 those opportunities have been packaged as well. And then, of course, one, one, one of the interventions as well is that we'll be, through this legislation, we'll be providing for overlays, uh, zoning overlays around the tax rank so that we are able to introduce different uh, building technology, but also different facilities in and around the tax rank, where, for example, we they can then introduce uh, your panel building hubs uh, and so forth. So, so, so that is very important uh, uh, intervention for our province. You can't really talk about the township economy and not necessarily uh, position the tax industry at the core of that, uh, and 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 so 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 that is one of the interventions that we've put in place in partnership with Toyota, but also the the, the, the taxi uh, industry in the province as well. The other one is uh, around the how we manage our our land as a province. Uh, so basically, this one is just to make sure that the land that we own uh, as government between the province and municipalities. We are able to sort of, you know, avail for uh, productive activities, but also uh, in a much more transparent way. Um, so, so that and and we are also introducing simplified leasing uh, processes uh, as well uh, as part of the process. One one of the also most the, um, important interventions that we we are bring bringing uh, on board, or at least that we are already implementing, is what you call. The township backyard real estate upgrade uh, program. Um, we we have already started this program uh, in partnership with uh, INLU, um, uh, and we are still looking for partners in this space as well. Uh, we've started in Tembisa and Mamilodi, where basically what 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 has been happening is that we, with in partnership with the landlords, of course, the owners of those houses, we are, we are helping them upgrade their bedrooms into double story bedrooms, adding additional obviously uh, capacity there. And as a result, they're able to generate uh, additional income and so forth. As you can imagine, a lot of the townships that are in the periphery of what you call uh, job opportunities, like in the CBDs and so forth, like your, your Deep Clough, your Orlando, uh, Mamilodi, uh, and so forth, have a lot of uh, what you call a backroom a market. Uh, so, and at, at the moment, obviously, that market is treated as informal. And therefore, if we are a, 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 a landlord, and you want to access funding to be able to expand that space, chances are you may not necessarily be assisted there. So we, we are intervening in this, uh, and of course, working with municipalities, what we'll be doing so is, con is to confer additional rights. It's, it's, it's the, the areas are already zoned for, for residential, so it's just a matter of conferring additional right where the capacity uh, permits to be able to add. Uh, uh some some of these properties as well so so we're already working on this i think it's a it's a it's quite a a a, a an interesting project and we we will be in the next uh, year or so expanding to other areas of the town of our townships as well in the province but one of the also the interventions that uh we are putting in this is that we we are also introducing through our work with the we're in the townships that um the, the retailers in the townships should be uh, start partnering with local uh, based enterprises uh, in this case, so that what we then do is that they need to be, be basically start integrating uh, local SMEs into their value chains in terms of products that they're selling on our shelves in the townships. And we've already work, started working in this project as well. So that's one of the areas where we're going to start uh, obviously uh, igniting or at least stimulating uh, uh, manufacturing as well in the township. Uh, should I work towards wrapping up, uh, Chairperson? All right, just a minute or so. I'll, I'll just rush through the last few slides. Thank you. So I'll skip some of the, but it's just safe to say that part of this, obviously, we are introducing what we call a model standard bylaw. So it, contrary to what we've heard, that we are introducing additional piece of legislation, we are not. We are introducing a piece of legislation that uh, is, is overarching. So we are introducing a provincial model standard bylaw 
that will be adopted by all municipalities. So meaning that what it will do is to streamline, you know, how bylaws are ap applied and used in our townships, and, and therefore it actually reduces the barrier, uh, the, 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 the regulatory barrier in our province as well. And without necessarily getting much into it, it's obviously it, it's, a, it's a tool that will be using to enable us to do a lot of things that I've mentioned. Uh, uh, for example, how the, the zoning overlays, the zoning rights around uh, taxi ranks as well, uh, but also issues around the licensing. It also uh, provides for a different regime in terms of licensing in partnership with municipalities. Uh, but also it, it obviously um, directly uh, provides for, for stimulation of investment in broadband infrastructure. And this, this is very important. And, and, and I think uh, it's one of the areas that will really, 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 really uh, sort of change our townships in terms of how we use space and access space as well, but also using different technology instead of uh, trenching and, 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 over, and, and, and putting you know, those expensive cables there, we can also use a, a, a street finisher, uh, which is already being used in other countries, uh, emerging countries, which is co you know, cost effective, but also can still be able to give you the same service as well. So, so just in, in conclusion, we're, we're basically in, uh, intervening uh, through regulation to change how we manage space, but also to ensure that we incentivize entrepreneurship in the township, that we are able to stimulate job creation for the youth, that we are also introducing a fund uh, to make sure that we fund uh, all these activities in partnership with IDC. We're also going to deploy, we're continuously deploying technology to ensure that we lower the cost of business, but also we enable clustering in the township and as a result, stimulate manufacturing in a lot of these areas. We also are working on integrating a small business into our value chain, uh, especially in the townships, uh, in partnership with the retailers uh, in the township as well. So, so those, are, those are some of the current interventions that we are putting in place to rebuild, but also to sort of, you know, fast track uh, some special transformation and ensure that we really link our township enterprises to real opportunities on the ground. I will pause here for now, uh, uh, Jefferson. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, um, uh, sir. Uh, thank you for that comprehensive, very um, detailed um, demonstration of the work that you do in the department. I, I do want to, because I've, you know, you, you and uh, Mr. Zamklaka uh, are connected, uh, you know, from the same uh, office, so to speak. So, and I'm hoping that, uh, uh, you know, some of the things he will touch on. For example, I wanted to find out, you know, how the department, if first of all, you're expediting those objectives of the bill. Uh, that, that you are slowly unpacking because the reality is that, you know, businesses in the township, they need help now. Uh, you know, they, they, they need help immediately. There's no luxury of time. So I just wanted to have an idea of the timelines. Okay, so, so the, the, the bill was out for comments. Uh, so we basically, uh, it's in the process of being processed into an act so that we can start implementing it. Um, the closing date for comments was the... 30th of July. Uh, so at the moment, it's a it's a process that is in the hands of our Gauteng legislature. Uh, so I think they will take it through different committees. And once it's, a, it's approved, then it becomes an act of government in the province, meaning that uh, everybody who does not necessarily comply with it is breaking the law in the province. So so yes, I think uh, the, 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 the expectation is that by September, at least, it should be done and dusted, approved so that, however, a lot of those things that are in the bill, we are already implementing them. So the bill will enable us to accelerate and, and sort of, you know, be able to reach more uh, enterprises in the township in a manner that is obviously less uh, costly as well. But uh, yeah, uh, basically, thank you. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. There's one or two comments uh, directed to you, but we'll take them as we do the Q's and A's. I want to invite onto the uh, uh, platform now, uh, Mr. Saki Zamklaka. CEO Houting Enterprise Propeller. Uh, thank you so, so much, uh, Mr. Masha. Much appreciated the contribution you've made. May I please uh, request that Mr. Uh, um, Zamklaga switch your, ah, oh, there we go, switch your camera on and welcome uh, to the session today. I would imagine that a lot of the stuff uh, that, um, that you, you, you know, that you would 
like to share or some of the stuff have been uh you know dealt with by by your colleague um but the stuff obviously that he kept mentioning the fact that you will uh, maybe touch on them my question to you as you kick off with your presentation is how will the gep create an enabling environment in the townships you know going forward uh given you know the unrest and the realities of covid and all of that um you're welcome, sir. Please uh, grab the mic. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks a lot, uh, Happy, um, and thanks to everyone who's on the presentation. I'll try and give a sense of who GEP is and what some of the initiatives are. But I think an, an important point to make is that what we actually are is an enabler for people to do what they need to do. So we, an entity, a development finance institution created in terms of an act of parliament to provide both financial and non-financial support to small and medium enterprises in Gauteng. And that we do in terms of training, we do microfinance, which can be grants or loans, we do contract finance, uh, we provide you know, some basic, basic, a business support, which may be registration of companies or assisting with business plans and, uh, and post-investment support. So these have been done with varying degrees of success. And one of the things then that the province has done was to put 250 million into GEP as a response to the SME environment. And that covers the COVID period, it covers the current looting, but also general support for SMEs. But what was one of the big conditions for that was that we must then try and increase that pool of funds by bringing other additional funders onto the table. And we've basically then been doing that. We've had a, a couple of funders that have come trying to match the funding that we're doing. Yes, well, yesterday, yeah, yesterday we had um, a, a discussion with Sapoa, the property, South African Property Owners Association, and we're looking at a retail fund that they are already setting up. And the intention is that this will be a 100 million rands fund. Um, and already about 30 million has been put into it. And the plan is that by uh, end of August, at least there's indication on how this is going to work, who will qualify to apply for it. And then hopefully we would have reached the 100 million rents fund. So this is one of those, but in, you know, just pretty much high level, what it would be targeting, as we said, is 100 million fund. We're looking at funding a maximum of 5 million per transaction uh, to be repaid over time. The property sector had already appointed IDF Capital to manage this fund. So that's one of the you know, sector specific initiatives that we're looking at. But a bigger one on the 250 million is then one of the discussions we've started is with the IGC where they are putting 150 and we're putting 150. And so we'll then have a 300 million rents fund. And what that 300 million rents fund is going to do is that it will focus then on different initiatives or, or funding uh, criteria. One is the um, is the is is related to the current looting where we propose that um, we fund up to a million rents per transaction, fifty percent grant and fifty percent loan. But there you must have operated before the crisis. You must not have um, claimed from insurance. So the really this is a scheme to help those who are affected to put them almost back to the same position they were in. It's not really a scheme where we're trying to get people to profit out of it. So, so for businesses, we're looking at that. And then for some of the micro businesses, um, we're looking at you know, grants of up to 50,000 rents because you know, small micro informal traders may not be able to absorb a loan, but need maybe to restock or buy a container or or, you know, or you know, have a little bit of working capital until they're back to where they are. So that initiative, which is based on this, um, is 100 million as part of this 300 million rents fund. And then for the rest uh, of the 200 million, we're then you know, looking at 10 million per transaction, 
which will most likely be a loan, but we're then looking at loans that are going to be concessionary. So in reality, I thought I would, which is what uh, the colleague from the department would do, I'll just show the kinds of financial products that we're looking at. Of course, you can apply for normal funding uh, at the GP. You can go to the website or send an email because at times our system has been given uh, challenges. You can send an email to enquiries at gep.co.za. So we will process your application as normal, but these ones, well, the one that's a specific initiative for the current looting, which will have a grant component, the administration of it will be announced soon, but we're hoping that between mid and end of August will be ready in the market. The applications will be through our branches website, and we're also looking at partnering with CIFA onto it. But simply all that we are is to enable these initiatives. So if there's something that's commercially viable and we can look at it, or you know whether it needs a loan or a portion that's a grant or non-financial support, uh, that's practically the role that we are here to do. So some of uh, Baba's um, entrepreneurs who are looking at support, you know, post COVID, we are we are there to, you know, whether it's measures and acquisitions or working capital facilities. So we are we are looking at that because ultimately we want to make the province attractive uh, to entrepreneurs and that we can support them. Thank you. Um, thank you for that uh, in, insightful information. Uh, I would like I would like you to sorry I would like you to take a question though um, from a you know from one of our attendees who is saying that um, are there opportun are these opportunities specifically for the Houting region? And if yes, uh, is there an office in other, in, in KZN in particular, that does the same work as you do, where, um, the, 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 you know, where they can make contact and, uh, and be exposed to the same type of programs that you have? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that. Um, so yes, we are limited to Gauteng. Um, so the entrepreneurs we can fund are those that are based in Gauteng. Um, KZN does have what is called a KZN Growth Fund. Um, we actually had a chat with them where we shared um, what it is that we're planning. I know they are looking at a partnership with the IDC and CIFA, so they will most likely have similar programs as well. And what we've also proposed generally across government is that we try and standardize the initiatives so that you don't have you know, one department with a different scheme and another with a different scheme. If they would try and make them as uniform as possible, it then helps because then you know people are gonna go and knock at different doors and they have to qualify with different things or end up double dipping and then, you know, we don't spread it to as many people who are deserving as possible. Uh, thanks. All right, and I would imagine while I still have you on the screen, uh, Mr. Zamplaga, that not only KZN, I would imagine that the Western Cape has the same kind of, oh, all provinces or many provinces rather, because I see the audience here today is really broad, is, is not necessarily just Houting uh, attendees. Yes, yeah, so I mean, so CIFA is probably, you know, a best start uh, for, for colleagues who are in other provinces because CIFA is national and the ITC, but different provinces have different schemes. Um, there's West Coro in the Western Cape. Yes. Um, there's uh, ECTC in the Eastern Cape. Uh, there's Limbopo Development Corporation in Limbopo. There's uh, Bumalanga Economic Growth Agency, MIGA in Bumalanga. So there's each of the different provinces uh, have their own, uh, but those we've sort of actively had discussions with this case at in the Western Cape. I do know the Eastern Cape is working on a scheme with CIFA. 
um, and safer, of course, and the ITC we're working with. So, so yes, uh, they can contact those entities. Okay, and, and and just for ease of reference, Mr. Samtlaga, please help me. Uh, you know, how do they access that whole list you've just mentioned now? Is there a central database where they can go to and look for the different provinces then? Uh, central database, I honestly don't think so. But okay. as I'm saying, the easiest um, entry point is a CIFA, a small enterprise finance agency, an agency under the Department of Small Business Development, which okay. works with the DTI. So they have the mandate to link you up with everybody else. So if you're not sure, the easiest central point to contact is CIFA. Okay. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Say. Uh, there's quite there's one or two things on Facebook. I'm I'm hoping that you are still here for the duration of the discussion. Yeah. But thank you. Uh, thank you. We truly appreciate your your time out of your very busy schedule. Thank you, sir, for that contribution. There's comments on Facebook, just two. Uh, Vusi says, uh, encourages all of us to buy from township businesses without excuses, no discounts, no, you know, because there's that, there's that uh, notion, you know, from many uh, South Africans, unfortunately, that local is questionable, is not good quality, is too expensive and all of that. So Vusi says, please buy from township uh, uh, businesses without excuses. But with that said, it comes with a, an equal responsibility. As businesses that operate in townships or anywhere, honestly, you know, anywhere in the country, the, 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 the product that you are selling or the service that you're selling must be good. We can't be, you know, uh, selling Fong Kong or, or, or not so good quality products, and we we want, and, and then we expect your, uh, your 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 market not to to question it. You know, it's one thing for us as proudly South African to say local is lekker, but it is in the product that we sell uh, as businesses and in the service. You know, when you go to a restaurant, do you get the attention you need? Do you, is it an experiential type of environment? Is it a clean restaurant where health protocols are in place? Do you sell great tasting food? Is it a lovely overall experience that, that uh, you're going to get exposed to if you go to Badela in uh, Soweto, if you go to, uh, you know, Wamashu, Wamex, or wherever you may be in the country, it has got to be a good quality product and, and good service. Uh, and, 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 and then on the flip side, the customer must also understand that, um, you know, um, it doesn't mean that every the stuff from South Africa is inferior, uh, you know, so, so that's what Wusi is saying. And Komoto is saying, Komoto is from Konalala. Uh, and is wanting to challenge Baba and the team from Houting Tourism uh, Office to, uh, you know, to, to one day consider using Konadlala as a breakaway session so they get to see, uh, you know, what it is that Konadlala uh, supplies. Uh, I see on the chat box and on Q's and A's, there's a lot of requests from many of you asking for presentations from this session and we will facilitate that uh, through the events office uh, that is in contact with you, uh, that will be in contact with you rather, we will uh, share all of that. Without further ado, uh, it now gives me great pleasure to welcome to the uh, podium my colleague from Proudly, a South African. Uh, her name is Ms. Janine van Stratton. And Janine is uh, an executive manager uh, for strategy stakeholders and legal at Proudly South African. He, she is now going to give you a, a uh, you know, a, a, a bit of background in terms of the work that we do as Proudly South African, which will then make sense uh, and, 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 and hopefully give you a broader appreciation and sense of understanding why we facilitate these types of, uh, of, 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 of discussions as, a, as the buy local campaign and as the custodian 
uh, of the bi-local movement and narrative, and also as a, an, an entity that prides itself in making uh, access to market opportunities available for township businesses uh, and, and the economy at large. Janine, you're welcome. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Program Director. Happy, my colleague, thank you. Um, hello to everybody on the call today, in the meeting today. Um, lovely to be with you. I'm going to, um, so so. thanks for the introductions. Janine van Straten is my name, and I head up strategy, stakeholder relations, and legal at Party South African, but strategy in as much as we look at localization strategies, which is very much needed in, in, in today's times and where we find ourselves. I'm going to share my screen now. And um, brilliant. Just double check share sound. Just making sure everything's in order. Wonderful. This the presentation should be on your on your screen. Um, so it gives me great, great um, pleasure to be with you today. Um, so Party South African was established um, in, uh, it, in 2001, but the idea for a bilocal campaign came about at the 1998 Job Summit. And um, Party, oh, South Africa is facing a triple challenge, and um, it's important for us to understand what that is. And this slide portrays it so beautifully. If you can look at the shoe, for instance, on the left, inequality, unemployment, and poverty. And these are all very much related. Um, but for, for Party South Africans' purposes, our mandate is really to tackle uh, unemployment. And um, the, bi -local, the idea for the bilocal campaign was really initiated by Madiba. So we're the, the child of Madiba, and our, we, um, we uh, were established by an organization called NEDLAC. Um, and why, why is there, um, why is there a, a need for, um, to address unemployment? Um, so it's, it's really looking at the unemployment rate. Um, and it is skyrocketed even way before COVID started. I mean, we're sitting at 32.6, which is really the highest level um, of unemployment our country has faced. The number of people, 7.2 million. And, and these are the ones that we know about. Uh, they are ones that have not actually um, have indicated that they are employed, meaning they have actually given up um, looking for a job. And those are not counted for. Um, in, in, in the figures. Um, so the discouraged work seekers are 3.1 million, um, plus, plus then the 1 million for other reasons that, are, that, that they're not searching for employment. So if you look at, if you put all of that figures together, we're probably sitting in the region of 43.2%. Um, so that's 11.4 million. And as we all know, with, with the current state of COVID and its impact on businesses, that figure is really skyrocketing. And now with with the unrest we faced, we we the, the repercussions of what has recently happened will still will still be known to us as as time goes on. Um, and then youth unemployment is is at at the highest, which is in excess of sixty percent of our youth are unemployed. And this is all looking at a total population of fifty nine million people. So very important that we that 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 unemployment um, um, be be um, addressed quite seriously. Let me see. I am. Um, Clicking for to go to the next slide. It's not working with me at the moment. Let me see. Okay. Um, just to connect and just to put into um, a slide um, tackling unemployment, why and the reasons behind that. Um, the reasons behind it, looking specifically at um, just just as a viewpoint, just just to give you just to hone in on one industry that's. That's industrialized. It's looking at at clothing, um, textile, footwear, and leather. We are sitting at a um, in 1999. Um, we had um, three three thousand five hundred plants, and last year we were down to one thousand one hundred plants. So it's almost a third. Well, it's less than a third of what what the industry used to be. And um, so this is um, and looking at the employees in the sector. Um, it's 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 uh, sitting at twenty thousand, whereas in the same time period was fifty thousand. So it really has uh, decreased significantly. And um, so apologies, these are the employment uh, figures for for uh, uh, furniture. 
and this is a, it's been one of those um, that's very dear to us because of 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 the challenges that it's faced and the number of 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 um, because of the number of companies and we're looking mostly at at small businesses. Um, uh, we've got a number of massive manufacturers, but the majority of 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 this industry is really carried by the small by the but by, by the very small manufacturers. So it's very close to our hearts and something that. Um, we've not noticed when, whenever we get an opportunity to speak um, outside of, of Gauteng, um, in, 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 the, in the neighboring provinces, um, you will always find that that is one of, the, um, one of the sectors that's really flourishing in terms of its interest in the community in manufacturing furniture. So you will find that uh, people are expressing themselves creatively but also the need for um, a buy-by making furniture in, town in townships, but also to make it a, a lucrative business. And that's why we're all here today. So it is one of those sectors that is really carried by, by, by the smaller players. And it's important for us to, to look at the value chain because if the moment you close down one factory, there's a, there's a massive value chain that gets affected. Um, if you're looking at furniture in, in specific, uh, you've got components, so you've got um, you've got wood, you've got plastics, steel, leather, and those are all connected. Uh, so the moment that there's one area that suffers, um, you know, it it really impacts it impacts uh, how how manufacturers buy. Um, for instance, if 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 it's uh, cheaper just to buy the finished good, you know, uh, as opposed to buying the leather locally and 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 the plastics and 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 the timber, et cetera, and to make a finished product. If it's easier to um, just to buy the finished goods because, say, the leather is not available. So why, why, why would you bother just to make the one? Why would you go out of your way just to source the leather abroad um, if it's not available locally to finish finish the product um, um, to buy the finished product from from abroad? You know, it's 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 one of those elements that we have to have to focus on. And, and as party South African. We're looking at where are the textiles made, where's the leather made, where does the metals come from. Um, we um, we are speaking with um, the DTIC in order to 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 um, approach the Sawmills Association, um, looking at the complete value chain, so that we, the moment you have everything available locally, it's so much easier just to buy local and for for manufacturers to make locally rather than to source bits from abroad when it's easier just to just to bring in the finished good. And that was the point I wanted to make. And so apologies, it didn't come across quite clearly. But um, so, so, so whenever there's a disruption in the value chain, it impacts the whole industry. And, and I think um, speaking with a lot of manufacturers that have shut shop, um, it's, because of, um, it's because people are just finding it cheaper to bring, to, 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 to bring products in from abroad. Um, and, and, and specifically here looking at... Um, Looking at another industry, which is also connected, as I as I mentioned, but uh, looking at uh, you know in 1996 there were 1,600 plants, and then in 2016 900 plants in clothing, textile, footwear, and leather, and it was because of the uh, because of imports and mostly from from China. It was it was cheaper just to do that, and and um, and our manufacturers had to suffer for that. Also. The same thing with this industry, more than halved in a, in a short space of time. The um, the importance uh, of a buy local campaign is, um, you know, it's it's not party South African is not unique just to just to our country. Um, each each country has, or most countries have their own buy local campaigns, and we've consulted a lot with 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 um, other buy local campaigns in Zambia, uh, looking at buy Zambia, Swazi, Malawi, Zimbabwe. Mauritius, they've got Made in Mori, and and we've we've consulted them because um, we found that the proudly South African model is is quite effective, especially looking at our neighbouring countries, and 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 they have really sat up and taken note of the work that we're doing. We were we were modelled around the Australian Made campaign um, when we just started many many years ago, twenty years ago, um, but since then we've really evolved into to coming into our own because our country has its own dynamics with, with regulation, um, political influence, um, et cetera. So we can't, we can't really um, just, just stay the same. And um, it's, uh, it's interesting also to note that uh, we did a case study with the US 
what's quite unique about the U.S. is they've got legislation that um, that that really uh, um, kind of forces forces the private sector to buy local, which is wonderful. But at this, in the same breath, we we can't be held to the same uh, standards and to the same laws as 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 the U.S. because we are signatory of um, WTO, the World Trade Organization, and there are a number of um, bilaterals with countries which we have to be cognizant of and adhere to. Um, so, so that is is um, that that does um, diminish our our, our uh, sort of the opportunities for us to to really put this type of legislation in place. Um, so uh, the U.S. has been thriving. I know under Trump, especially, and when the trade war started. Um, the U.S. was uh, was really thriving in terms of um, what Trump has put into place, and then President uh, Biden um, has also then um, they put into place the executive order uh, for for the for for the, the state there to buy local when they do buy, which is which is a it's just to showcase that um, it's to showcase that that government's feedback and input in terms of how they buy. Um, can really, uh, you know, it is a, it's a, it can be a wonderful example to the rest of us, and and we also have a number of um, sectors that that has been designated for local content, so that when the the, the public sector buys, it, they have to buy local, and um, I, I'll share with you uh, more on that and how Party SA works there, but um, just looking at and, and this this case study was just to share with you that there's really a. Um, the, the buy local phenomenon is 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 a global one, but it it's now more important than ever before to to really get government and the private sector to work together um, in order to really assist with industrialization even more. Um, the importance of localization. So so talking about the case studies before or the case study before, um, why why is the why should we localize? And then this is what this slide um, um, tells you. I mean, and this is the education that we put out there to the public sector, which we do appeal to them to buy local over and above those specific products that they have to buy local. Um, we, we talk to the private sector and also the consumer consumers. And this is our core messaging. So our marketing team really puts out beautiful messaging, but it's all about these, these points. It's to retain and create jobs. It promotes skills development, because if there's demand, we need more people to make product and in order to make product you need to be uh, trained to do so economic development which is what my co the colleagues that that spoke um before me uh, mentioned economic development and and the work and beautiful projects that they're doing in that sphere empowerment improved living standards infrastructure development increase the, G the gdp and also to lo really look at decreasing imports and and really um I'm sorry, increasing um, exports and decreasing imports that are coming in. Um, so that is really, um, and of course, keeping in accordance with what's expected in terms of w WTO. Um, so this is the this this is what we need. Every business, every consumer, even you as a consumer that might that has a business, when you go to the store, we appeal you to 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 go in and lift the product, flip it over, and check what's the label of origin, and choose made in South Africa. That's if you don't see the Proud ESA logo. So this is the messaging that we put out. Um, the uh, the US unemployment rate um, is really, uh, if if we compare it to South Africa's rate, it's 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 on another level. Uh, this this is uh, data before COVID struck, but um, the US unemployment rate stood at three point six percent. I mean, if um, if you compare it to to where we were sitting at, so the number of um, um, the number of Unemployed people in the U.S. is 5.9 million in 2019 for a population of, of three, uh, 329 million. If I can just take you back to this slide, I mean, we are sitting 59 million people and we've got 11.4 million people unemployed. So it's just um, it's just you can't compare the two. So we really are on a back foot as a country. So we really have to do everything in our power to to really strengthen, strengthen our economy and create more jobs. Our mandate, um, so I've mentioned, is really to to influence buyers to buy local. So the private sector, public sector, and the consumers, and and in order to 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 give that those the messaging to make the messaging clear, we we say influence. Uh, we say buy local to 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 stimulate job job creation. 
And um, we also have four, four key focus areas. So it is preferential procurement in the public sector um, and also education with the general public um, and the private sector. And um, that is the work that we do. That's our mandate. But it's all good and well to say buy local. But if you don't know where to find local, um, that also creates a problem of its own. And we have um, we are promoting accessibility of locally made products and services. And that's why what Happy mentioned in the beginning, it's proudly South African must be synonymous with access to market opportunities. That's what we're there for. Um, when we did start the this the campaign, it was all about um, a patriotism and national pride, but it is much more than that. When you see that logo, you must know what it stands for. Um, and that that's really what we're focusing on. And in order to get companies to become members, there must be benefits associated with membership. And uh, the benefits is then to create markets for our members. Uh, where does Pride USA sit in the value chain? So we have on board as members, we have manufacturers, retailers, um, and and they 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 are member companies. We we uh, we go to we our membership base includes manufacturers, service providers, the retailers themselves, so that we can keep we can keep the um, the community um, going in terms of supporting one another. I think that's very very important. And um, and the the manufacturers must supply the retailers with products. Uh, so we we get on board, um, you know, really uh, companies from 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 all industries uh, to to become members. And uh, once a product is made, um, it needs to be in a retailer or online available online. And then we need to get the consumer or the business to buy from from that from that company. So we're pretty much sitting in the value chain, and we've taken on all of this responsibility to make sure that that uh, local companies thrive. Um, so we do, we are a membership-based organization. And the reason we do that is because we have to, we have to protect the integrity of our brand. So our logo is on the, the left-hand side of the screen. And um, you'll, you'll notice the colors of the flag um, in the background. And that, that, that um, represents local content for us. So we, uh, when we do, uh, when we get companies uh, who have expressed interest in becoming members, we do, we do vet them and we look at four key criteria. So local content is one, whereby we ensure that um, the, the product is made in South Africa. So conversion of raw materials that might have been brought in from abroad, uh, components that might have been brought in from abroad, we ensure that the transformation of those, of, of those raw materials and the assembling of that product uh, components do take place in, within the borders of South Africa. And what we do is with with the manufacturers that we that we bring on board, we ask them to uh, we ask them the question, what is it that's that you import? And we work with them to find ways for them to buy local. And often what we found is a lot of the raw materials are not available locally. A lot of the components aren't available locally. And that intel gives us then the opportunity to. Um, to look at ways to 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 seek um, consultation with government, find ways. Um, we we work we work very closely with NEDLAC, um, especially we are part of the localization technical working committee, and we find ways to assist companies to um, start manufacturing locally, um, the textiles, the components, um, so that we can import, replace, and I'm using that term quite loosely. But import replace wherever possible. So keeping it with regards to the trade agreements that are in place, we, we're quite sensitive about those. We won't step on any toes there. We can't. But where we can is where we can make a difference. So, so we are looking at uh, an import replacement project, which is very exciting. And it's really focused on raw materials and components at the moment. So we're working very closely with, um, with, various, um, with the DTIC in terms of all the master plans in place as well as uh, various other um, organizations such as the uh, MEMSA, which is associated with, with, with mining houses. Um, and we look at capital, uh, capital equipment and find ways to, to, to really um, assist with building capacity. So we look at local content. If you're a service provider, we look at um, whether you are, um, uh, we, we look at whether you are, uh, buying and supporting other companies that are local companies that are making product locally, that are providing services locally. 
And then we also uh, look at your employment figures. Do you employ, how many people do you employ within the borders of the country? So we look at your procurement practices. We look at how you make your product, where you make your product, what, how much of it is, is available locally, how much of, of it uh, do you bring in from abroad? And once we've assessed each company's contribution, then we are el eligible to, to, to uh, assess whether they do um, adhere to the local content um, requirement that is in place. Then that big green tick in our logo stands, stands for quality. And that's why, that's why the logo can't just be free for all. We have to double check that, that and triple check and vet and look at, look at uh, so the certificates that have been uh, issued by various organizations. So we're working very closely with CEDA, SABS, et cetera, to make sure that these companies adhere to our quality criteria. Because we can't have a, a shampoo on the racks that uh, hurts the consumer because it hasn't gone through um, the various, um, you know, whatever the, the, the regulator requires it to go through in terms of testing the product. So we work also with Sinus accredited laboratories. So it's important that, that uh, the, the, the mark of quality is what we call our logo. It's the mark of quality. It's very important that we do vet companies in accordance with, with these four uh, key criteria. Um, very importantly, we look at whether the company um, implements fair labor practices. So we ask for an HR policy. We check that um, they are employing in accordance with basic conditions of employment act because we don't want to be associated with, with somebody um, that's running a sweatshop scenario. And then also environmental standards is important. You can't associate yourself with a company that is hurting the environment. So we work with companies that, that do have environmental policies in place. If you are, if you are um, a one-man business listening today, don't be um, put off by these four key criteria. Please do touch base with us. We'll work with you. Often um, when you see environmental standards, you think that you need an ISO, you know, you need an ISO certificate that talks to the environment, which is not the case. Um, if you are running a, a small service uh, business, we look at, do you, what, are you playing your part in terms of keeping your carbon footprint down, for instance? So we'll work with each and each company and wherever you might be lacking in terms of your, your compliance in, in accordance with our uh, four key criteria, we'll assist you, we'll, we'll refer you to the relevant organizations and, and you're in good company today with my colleagues that have presented before me to assist you with, 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 with your requirements. Um, and then the fee structure is also, has been reduced since 2017. So uh, companies who are turning over 5 million rand or less per annum only pay a membership fee of 500 rand, excluding VAT per annum. And that has been reduced uh, from 1,000 rand to 500 rand since 2017. So it is more affordable now than ever before to become a member of Pali South African. And uh, the, that 500 rand really covers the administration costs for us to, uh, to, to really um, to, to, uh, to, to manage your membership application form, et cetera, file it and, and, and our systems. We've got wonderful digital systems in place now, which is quite quite exciting time for the organization that we, we've digitized more than before. Um, so, so it really is much more affordable than what it used to be. And the wonderful benefits for member companies, it's the use of the logo. Also, we have an online store called RSA Made. So we're very excited. Our, our members are going to be taken um, once they have gone through a vetting process with the DTIC. Um, they have the opportunity to, 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 to go to an international trade show via the RSA Made platform. So it's wonderful. It's a wonderful opportunity. The RSA Made platform also facilitates a, a B, B2C transaction. So if you have um, an online store, you know, uh, the big one is the T, the T word. I don't want to say their name, but it's a T there. I would say they are competitive, competitor of ours. Um, you know, you, you, the T a lot, you know. Uh, so they're a competitive, competitor of ours. But um, that type of um, purchasing can be done through RSA Mate. So just to, just to put it out there. The wonderful thing about RSA Mate, they also facilitate business to business transactions. So they can manage a massive order, for instance, and, and that's why Kimberly Clark came on board as a member company. They, at that time, just before COVID struck, wanted to become members, enlist on RSA Made, and then we facilitate the transactions to a hotel group. And when I say we, it's through RSA Made, our member company. 
So it will go through um, the um, the platform and they were going to supply the toilet paper and tissues, et cetera, to um, an international hotel group. So uh, when we when we have that type of um, um, uh, th those type of interests in 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 this online store, we just think it will it's it it really assists our other members who might not have those kind of um, ambitions to supply an, uh, uh, an international hotel group, but it it gives uh, members the opportunity to to to, uh, to transact you know, with other with other businesses and possibly abroad with our trade show that we're participating in. We also monitor tenders that government puts out, um, specifically in that designated space, and I'll talk to you more about that. But our tender um, monitoring algorithm picks up over 800 or uh, monitors over 800 websites whereby government puts out tenders and RFQs. And um, they uh, we, we then catch these tenders in the designated space and we send them onto our member companies via email. Um, so it's another access to market opportunity by doing business with government that we offer our member companies. Then also we have a database of local products and services, which is quite, quite exciting. We are translating that into portals on our website. We started off with, medic or with, with PPEs, so sanitizer, disinfectants, um, masks that, uh, that are non-medical for non-medical use. And we've also, um, we've also uh, now included medical PPEs because the country, I don't know if you know, the country before COVID struck could not keep up with the, the demand for medical PPEs. And uh, it's taken us a year and probably so was a part of that, that project um, that was um, spearheaded by BUSA. It, it was called uh, Business for South Africa. And, and we were able to capacitate over 60 manufacturers that, that we didn't have before in the medical PPE space. And we also have a portal that talks to, talks to what they make you can contact them and 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 really uh, facilitate your own um, transactions through uh, through contacting these companies. And we also did the same for furniture. Now we are, the vision for us is to have for every industry to have our members in accordance with um, in um, in accordance with a portal, um, and and that will that will come into play as as time passes. So we're quite excited to to introduce more portals as we go along, and that's synonymous with with our database. And then we're also part of wonderful um, networking opportunities with, with the Franchise Association, Tourism Business Council, and various other associations. So it's very important that we get, um, that we assist our members um, in terms of showcasing what they're capable of, the amazing products, um, to showcase to, uh, to, to the associations, because that's where they have the private, that's where the private sector is. Uh, for them to know what's available locally so that they can support local local much more than before. And then here are a lot of our marketing benefits, um, which is the uh, Buy Local Summit and Expo. It's an annual event. It's it's really our flagship and it's a wonderful way to, to exhibit product. Um, you're still able to access um, the exhibition from this year. So so it's a it's it's a it's a wonderful platform um, for um companies to exhibit their goods and then we also get the buyers in the room whether it be virtual or or, or as a physical exhibition space so it's really to take get the buyers to our members and that's what that event is all about in addition to um conferencing that is as very popular and very well known and uh we 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 very much have the support of the presidency and the dtic in terms of that so we quite we're quite thrilled with the work and with the work that we're doing there supply chain workshops so so we take our members uh, or we host our own. So that is, there's quite, a, there's a lot happening at the moment. So it's very exciting that we strengthened the way that we do events now, given that's COVID times. We also have sector specific forums where we look at a specific forum. That's why I could give you the clothing, textile, footwear, leather data, the, the furniture data. So we work with experts in the industry, look where industries are, in, are facing challenges and try and unblock these so that we can really move industrialization so we can create more, more jobs by doing that. Joint promotions, so that is, uh, so when we have, uh, we have various major events and expos that we participate in, we take our members there, we have a, a extensive marketing um, um, activities and campaigns that run uh, where we promote our members' products and services. I'm sure you've seen on, on social media and on, on, on various um, other platforms that we speak about our, what our members are doing and achieving. And then we also spoke to you about the industry-specific portals. 
and then also our, we've got a wonderful PR and comms team. Um, so you notice us uh, in the business report and also um, you'll notice all the press releases that we do, um, et cetera. So our team is very, very busy in that regard. Um, the, the public sector procurement, these are the 27 products that government has to buy local in um, either full 100% threshold or there's a minimum um, for other products, you know, set-top boxes is 30% local. So we're working with the DTIC to expand on this list. Um, and these are how our tender monitoring function monitors uh, websites where, the, where, where tenders are posted. And uh, we forward the tenders not only to our member companies, but also to the DTIC to monitor this local content threshold. Because we're finding that, you know, sometimes when government does uh, do put out tenders, that they do get it wrong. Um, and we, we're able to work with the DTIC in order to correct that as soon as possible. Um, we also, um, we're also working with them to, to, to increase, to, to include sanitizers, disinfectants. So the list will be growing. And it's a big, it's a big, um, it's an important part of our job to make sure that government, that this list grows in order for government to support more, more companies locally. Um, I think the, we are working with um, National Treasury and the Central Supply Database. So if you're a member company of ours, uh, within the next three months, you'll be getting an email saying, do you want to do business with government? The moment you say yes to us, we are going to be in a position to sync our system with the CSD so that you don't have to go and apply separately to be, be a part of the CSD. So that's a wonderful benefit that is available to member companies. Of course, the designated items will be the ones that will probably be the easiest sell because government has to buy local. And we look at these procurement opportunities uh, through the tender monitoring function that I've spoken about. And we uh, send them off to our members and the DTIC. And uh, we, at the same time, identify manufacturers that, that can make um, those products and send them the tenders. And then also correct and assist government to help with it's, uh, the tenders not complied with that local content threshold. And then also there's a response from the bidders. Um, so it's also important for us to track and monitor. And we're working with government to see how best we can do that so that we can also be more transparent. And when I say we, I mean, so that government can, can be more transparent. We're working with them to, to find ways to do that in. Um, because we want to, at the end of the day, the Auditor General comes in. We, we work very closely with the Auditor General. And that's pretty much the office that brings the the colleagues that aren't that aren't abiding by the rules. That's the that's the that's the um the the agency that really brings them to book, so to speak. Um, we we uh we also visit and uh, host forums. Uh, we're doing that digitally now with with all the procurers from each province um, in government. Uh, so we bring the DTIC into the room. They talk about and specifically the local procurement unit. Look where it, uh, there might be a change in legislation or an increase in the number of products that are designated. And we bring um, Party SA also talks and we bring our member company into the room specifically in that area to talk about the importance of supporting local more, more widely than just the designated space. And we're also going on a, uh, a massive drive as Party SA to work with SOEs, to work with departments, um, provincial departments, to find ways for uh, getting the uh, the public sector to commit to buy locally more than what you notice in the designated space uh, so that they support their own um, before they even go to another province and before they even go abroad when they do procure. And then we'll have the AG in the room at the same time to address um, to address uh, non-compliance, what could happen with you. So we're quite excited. I think in December we'll have the the, the new legislation um, out so so we'll uh, probably say has really put down quite strength. Uh, we were quite adamant in terms of um, putting out uh, um, our comments and feedbacks uh, feedback. So we'll we'll see what comes of that when when it gets uh, published in December. Um, the private sector, we are also on a massive drive to to get the get the uh, private sector to buy local. And we do that, we've got a market access platform. We'll be launching that in August, um, which is quite exciting. And um, we are, it will be a way for our members to enlist their products on as suppliers and uh, to introduce these members to the corporates. 
um, that, that are also part of that platform. The corporates can post their private sector tenders on that platform. And then um, the, 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 the suppliers can then uh, bid for tenders. They can make uh, the, the corporates put their localization commitments on. So it will be a, a pretty much a, a, a one-stop shop in terms of the private sector procurement. So uh, please do watch the space and do attend the launch when it does come out. Um, uh, we're quite excited to, 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 um, to showcase that platform. I have mentioned we work very closely with retailers um, in terms of increasing their local content on their shelves. Uh, the other elements I have spoken about, these are our portals. And I wonder, Happy, um, in terms of our consumer, uh, I've spoken about RSMA, but, but everybody on the call, don't worry, we'll, we'll share this presentation with you. Um, you can go through the ways that in which we um, work with consumers to, to um, really to, 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 to get them to, to participate in our programs and to get them to, to, to really drive the messaging across in terms of education. And these are a lot of um, our sector-specific um, um, e-cards that were put out in order to assist companies, uh, the consumers, to choose local when they do buy. Um, so we've put, uh, we've we've not noted our member companies in those spaces, and then we also have a game time um, um, advert, which I'm sure you've seen with Dr. Dr. Carney, um, championing the um, the ad as our president. And um, we also have a wonderful initiative coming up. It's called Living Like It Locally in September um, as the Heritage Month start off. So we are taking, we are making sure South Africans know that the buying local is a lifestyle choice and we're making it easy for them to identify locally made products. Happy, is there time for me to play the ad? Let me start my video. Sh shall I play our ad? Okay, fantastic. Hmm, it seems to be stuck. The second half is about to begin. We need to change the scoreboard. It's time for all of us to pause and rethink the game plan in order to save the future. I call on all of us to be game changers because greatness isn't reserved only for some people. By buying local, we're choosing to create jobs and sustain the ones we have. Time and time again, South Africans have taken destiny into their own hands, creating products that the rest of the world wanted to buy. See, the world remembers about us what we sometimes forget. But it's time for change. Let's all buy local. It's game time, Zanzi. Local is lekker. <laughs> Your everyday decisions shape our future. There we go. My parting shot is Please, if you are interested in becoming a member of Party South African or would, uh, if a query comes to your mind uh, that you'd like to ask us um, to respond, please do uh, email us at info at proudesa.ca.za. Thank you very much, Happy. Thank, thank you so much, Janine. And I'm glad that was your putting shot because I see on the chat box somebody's asking about um, how to join the, the campaign. Can I please ask PR? to respond to that and uh, uh, guide um, uh, guide accordingly. Thank you, Janine. And, um, you know, I, 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 there was another comment made where somebody said, do you only deal with manufacturing? And I've just responded that we deal with all industries. We need friends everywhere, especially those industries that are labor intensive. We would need the whole day to really unpack the work that proudly South African does. But uh, thank you so much, Janine. A presentation is much appreciated. I'll take the questions for you because I know we have to get off the call. And now it, um, it gives me great pleasure to welcome onto the podium a friend of the campaign uh, who we haven't seen in a while because of COVID, uh, Mr. Uh, Kalaletso 
Kwale, uh, who is head of enterprise development at the uh, at Absa Bank. Uh, thank you so much, Say. Great to see you, and uh, profusely apologize that we are running over time. But um, you're most welcome to grab the mic from me. Thank you. Looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much, uh, Makumalo, for inviting me and the warm welcome and a good day to all the participants on the webinar. My name is Kala Lezo Kaile and I look after enterprise development at APSA. I will be talking around the forecast that we released and actually, uh, Makumalo, we've uh, been able to uh, update the growth forecast for uh, full year 2021 from 3.8 to 4 percent year-on-year growth um, and I'll be sharing my presentation so that you can be able to follow. There we go, we can see your screen. Thanks. Is the screen, okay. Yes. Is it on presentation mode? Yes, it is on presentation mode. Okay, thank you very much for that. Yes, um, so if we look at just the trend from a GDP growth point of view, uh, we'll see that in 20, if you compare 2019 to 2020 Q2, you've seen a market improvement across most sectors you will see that the sectors that have shown significant improvement include mining as well as those sectors that were adversely in, impacted by the lockdown, such as construction, trade and hospitality, and of course, the service industries as well in the finance and business services sector, as well as transport and communications. So we're seeing a nice trend, even though we see that agriculture has dropped somehow, in uh, the first and second quarter of 2021, that is purely a cyclical factor. And we should see in quarter three, after the harvest in, in the bulk of the grain producing uh, provinces, we should see a nice uptick there. But you can see that from a, if you compare uh, the quarter one and quarter two growth from 2021 to the quarter four in 2019, you do see the impact there that even though we're seeing positive growth, there's actually, of a lower base. And uh, we are so happy that we are seeing the recovery, even though we've had some unfortunate uh, results in the, in the past uh, you know, couple of weeks. If we look at the mining and manufacturing output, you see that um, from 2020, and of course, with the, from when the lockdown was instituted, there was a big drop in those two critical sectors, but we've seen a nice rebound through quarter four, in 2020, as well as the first two quarters of 2021. And this is important because um, both sectors are critical. The good um, employers, especially the manufacturing as well as the mining sector. And with the mining charter coming through with the next iteration, which is focusing on localization, we should see that growth continue into uh, the balance of quarter uh, four, as well as early into 2022. Now, when we look at the, the consumer spending, we see that the, the recovery has been strong. We see the distinct drop as a result of lockdown in quarter two, 2020. But we see that for durables, semi-durables and services, we've seen a nice uptick coming through in the first two quarters of this year, um, uh, you know, carrying the momentum from the fourth quarter of December, I mean, of 2020. And then you also notice that there's a surprise, a pleasant surprise in terms of the uh, disposable income. And this is actually paying testimony to the fact that although we've seen a net um, employment drop of 1.5 million jobs, this has been primarily prevalent in the lower skilled and uh, lower um, you know, income brackets. The, middle class, as we'd like to term it, and the higher income groups have seen quite a resilience. And you would have seen that um, that has you know, uh, shown a pleasant uptick in terms of disposable income. 
And hopefully this will be able to fuel what we call the consumer-led demand in the, in the next couple of quarters. And then when we look at the various sectors and, and, and the impact of the strong public sector spending, um, we see that, uh, you know, although there has been a consistent uptick from the beginning or the end of 2020 through to the beginning of the first two quarters in 2021, uh, business confidence had increased quite significantly. Um, and you will see that there has been a slight drop in May, and that would have probably been due to, I mean, in June, that would have probably been due to the uh, effect of the uh, power inconsistencies through load shedding that you've been able to experience in early June. But when you look at the state-owned companies and the investment that they've been making and what is planned, you'll see that most of the utilities have got strong plans and there's been a reallocation of a budget in favor of infrastructure spending that will lead to a strong recovery in these sectors. And that should give a nice injection to the overall economic activity. What we also see as a result of the strong uh, commodity prices and the stable uh, currency from a rent point of view, that there's been some strong upside surprises in the merchandise trade balance. So you'll see that even though uh, in the middle and, uh, and the latter part of 2020, there was a, you know, a sharp decline that has actually rebounded quite nicely with the actual, um, uh, yeah, with the actual trade balance actually exceeding what was forecast. So this is a, a, you know, a nice surprise that should actually carry confidence in the economy and it should uh, carry through right to the balance of 2021 and also into 2022. You'll also see that export commodity price that is showing a nice steady increase uh, in the latter part of 2020, as well as going into the first two quarters of 2021. If we now look at uh, you know, the baseline GDP growth forecast from a quarterly and annualized point of view, we'll see that for the, the, pop, the last two quarters, even though we had a drop as far as the, the, the quarter two GDP growth is concerned. And obviously, given the events that we've had and the impact of load shedding, you'll see that we'd have dropped from a quarter point of view to a minus two in terms of GDP growth. But if you look at the full quarter, uh, in the full year for uh, 2021, it will increase right up to, that's the second last column on the right, it will increase to 4%. So this is the pleasant surprise that we've seen from our earlier forecast of the growth from a 3.8 point of view to a 4%. And we think that most of the uh, sectors that have shown strong resilience and that have got a support from you know, public sector investment point of view, as well as the strong export-driven uh, growth in the commodity sector should augur well to carry us through to that 4% at the end of 2021. We'll also see that uh, the impact of employment um, you know, is marked. And you will see that there was you know, a, a, a big decline in the last quarter of 2020, in the last two quarters of 2020, as far as employment is concerned. But this has rebounded uh, you know, in the last two quarters. And you will see that we are expecting it to be uh, you know, a strong performer come the full year or the end of the financial year. We see that uh, the, the inflation has remained stable. Uh, there was an upward you know, movement in the last two quarters, but we should see that uh, you know, stabilizing. We forecast that it might, might get a big, a slight uptick in the quarter three numbers because of the, the impact of the fuel increases. Uh, you know, the multiplier effect will obviously uh, filter down into all the sectors um, from logistics and, and otherwise, but we are hoping that you know that will stabilize in the in, in the medium term. And then, if I just look at you know how this would translate to the uh, really critical um, revitalization of the township economy, like the previous speaker spoke about, buy local, buy local, buy local. We see the supply chain opportunities as being a critical. Uh, multi, uh, having a critical multiplier effect 
to local consumption and local, uh, you know, if you want to say the circulation of the rent. If we look at that first uh, column there, we, we need to leverage off the uh, planned infrastructure spending and the opportunities that are linked to that. If you look at all the SOEs that are, you know, um, involved as far as infrastructure is concerned, as well as provincial and national uh, departments in the built environment and supporting infrastructure growth, it's estimated that the potential impact is 80 billion. And as we know that there's been a, a, you know, a significant investment over you know, from a legacy point of view in townships where we have light industry infrastructure. Now this infrastructure can be revitalized with uh, you know, the partnership of grants from the IDC and DBSA that can actually start to increase the supply chain opportunities for infrastructure. So if you look at you know, Gauteng as an example, um, there's over 10 billion that is earmarked for expenditure in, in the housing element alone. And if we start to create um, you know, light industries that can support the value chain, whether it is from bricks, um, it can be doors and whatever other inputs are being made available into the, uh, you know, the supply chain of, 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 of housing, we can start to see an increase of uh, you know, economic activity within townships and peri-urban areas. And then of course, we've also got various EU-based uh, partnerships that are available to support the industrialization drive in townships and in peri-urban areas. One of those partners is the GIZ from, from you know, German industrial uh, entity. So we need to really leverage of the opportunities that uh, are there in the supply chain of, uh, to, in order to leverage of the infrastructure spending. And then when we look at that uh, middle column, there's a lot of uh, you know, municipal and, 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 and state-owned land that is available currently in, you know, in urban areas and in townships. And this needs to be, although it's a medium term uh, you know, play that we are looking at here, we need to start um, increasing the utilization of that into what we call technology-driven intensive agri-enterprises that are actually viable for small-scale farming. So we can turn the small-scale uh, farming environment into a high value through the use of technology. And of course, there's a big drive uh, that we are, we are, we are pushing as, you know, as a sector in the, in the agricultural space to move from primary to secondary agri-activity and increase the value creation in that space. And hopefully, you know, if we can be able to leverage off the partnerships with the various agri-technology companies, we can uh, be able to um, increase the, the activity within uh, townships and within the peri-urban areas uh, using technology to really scale the impact that uh, you know the agri sector can provide, and then of course major retailers and other institutions such as uh, education and the uh, both from you know the, the the primary education as well as the the, the secondary, we have uh, an opportunity to get support from these sectors, and they've shown a significant appetite to support. Um, the agri sector. We've got various innovations that we've come across, like you know, uh, high tech containers that provide you know um, a growing medium for uh, various high value crops. And once we can be able to leverage all these partnerships in the townships and in the peri urban areas, we should be able to increase the economic activity and circulate the rent within local economies. And of course, various sectors and companies, corporates, as well as the public sector, have got enterprise development and business development support that is available uh, to be able to support the uh, you know, development and entry of uh, you know, SMEs into this space. And then of course, when we look at the last one and we look at the, the retail um, and last mile logistics opportunity, we see that, like I mentioned, major retailers are providing small support for small township-based retailers. So almost all the big retailers have got a proposition to increase the, 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 uh, you know, the retailer activity in townships and in the urban areas. And most financial institutions, including UPS, are partnering with uh, you know, these retailers to bring, the, 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 or to, to, to bring down the barriers to entry and to uh, enable a stronger participation of township businesses. 
And then, of course, the increased local sourcing of products that support the supply chain opportunities uh, from the township areas will also lead to have uh, to, to, to create you know, an increased level of economic activity in these areas. And then, of course, we also come across a lot of uh, quite a few uh, exciting tech based last mile logistics uh, uh, proposals. And this has become a growing sector. And it actually supports the whole notion of bringing local business linkages to, to, to the fore and circulating that all important trend within local economies. And we now, if you look at the prolification of, of, of delivery services and other uh, services, related services into the township environment, it's a significant avenue for growth that should be tapped into and, 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 and supported because it brings a new class of, of the logistics uh, you know, sector. And then, of course, uh, all this increased economic activity through the multiply effect that I've highlighted are critical to ensuring that. We, we, we buy local in the real sense of, of supporting and, and encouraging the, the township economy and the peri-urban economies from being a, a consumption-led economic environment to a production-led uh, with a, a, a big boost from a multiplier effect that will derive from this approach. So um, that is uh, it for me, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, happy Ngidi, Makumalo. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, and I'm available to field, uh, you know, questions in the Q&A sector. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Thank you. Um, it has so much to take in, uh, so much to absorb. Uh, but if you're in business, um, entrepreneur, big or small company. Uh, you, you need the, the figures uh, need to make sense to you. Uh, you've got to be exposed to this kind, kind of reality because you can't operate uh, without a fuller understanding of this. And we're appreciating the inroads that uh, APSA keeps making uh, in this area of uh, entrepreneurship, township economy, and the economy at large. I am going to now request um, uh, everybody, all the speakers, as we close to have their cameras on. Uh, Kala, let's, so there's one quick question for you. Does APSA also support startup emerging farmers? Is there a program aligned with that? Yes, yeah. we do. Um, okay. and, and we provide strong leakages to, to corporate off takers. In, in, in the retail and other sectors in support of uh, you know, emerging um, farmers. You know, the, the, the Triple B Act is the most enabling piece of legislation because it does focus on creating um, supply chain opportunities in new entrants. And APSA is a big player in that field. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, so much, sir. May I please um, uh, request that uh... Uh, Baba Li uh, Matopani. Okay, there we go. Uh, your your cameras, please. And this is how I'd like to, um, you know, a, a, a summarize the tone of the discussion today. Is that we all, as entities, have a big appreciation of the of the inroads and the difference that we are expected to make to ensure that township businesses make it. We of the view, uh, and I'm sure you'll uh, you know, uh, agree with me that no business, it doesn't matter what it is in, in the township um, or anywhere else in that matter, no business opens with an intention to fail. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to make it when they get into the business space. It's not easy. And, and, and it, is, it then takes entities like ours to create an enabling environment to ensure that uh, the businesses uh, make it survive, make profit, uh, you know, take care of empl employees and take care of households and livelihoods. That's the, that's the value chain. Uh, and, and that was the essence of, of all the programs that all of you have shared here today. Uh, there's a lot of questions, well, not really, there's quite a lot of comments and there's a lot of people who have asked, please, can I have access to uh, Baba, for example? 
you know, there's be a few things that I would like to email him about and all of that. I'm going to request that this platform speakers to give us a uh, to give us permission to at least share the email addresses and that's it and the presentations. There's a lot of requests for presentations on all platforms, Facebook, um, here on the on the on the Zoom platform. Two things, uh, you know, access to contact details. We promise you won't give them your ID numbers and the number of your wife uh, and the number of the girlfriend. We won't do that. <laughs> if you can just allow us to please share email addresses and share the, um, the actual presentations. That will be fantastic. And uh, to the attendees, it is impossible. We'll need another hour. Uh, you know, to unpack some of the things that have come to the fore, uh, but you will have access to the presentations and email addresses of the colleagues that made presentations. Uh, thank you so, so much uh, for, for your time. Uh, the people that attended at, at CB kept our numbers. Uh, so, so all your contributions were very interesting, obviously, and informative, uh, many of the comments uh, uh, say. And um, um, in closing, uh, on behalf of Proudly South African, we truly appreciate your time uh, and your contribution. I'm going to give you a minute to just close it off your vision for township economy going forward. Kala uh, Leto. Uh, thank you, Nakubano. <clears throat> if I may just say, I mean, we have a lot of partnerships with um, various sectors, including the, the retail motor sector. As you know, that there's been, uh, we've just launched um, the right to service where we, you know, it's opening up the opportunity for smaller mechanics and other related services to provide servicing of OEM, uh, you know, cars. So we've got various partnerships that are in place and are being finalized to increase the activity in, within the, you know, particularly the township and the urban areas. So, you know, most sectors um, are keen to really transform and bring new entrants on board. And, um, you know, APSA as a leader in terms of enterprise development is very close uh, to those sector players. And we have uh, strong partnerships uh, that are being increased on a continuous basis to be able to afford those, uh, you know, opportunities that bring a significant multiply back to, to the circulation of the right principle in, in these areas. And thank you for the partnership. Uh, you know, we hope it grows from strength to strength. Um, and we look forward to engaging uh, much more in the future. And you are quite welcome to share the presentation as well as my, my email addresses to the participants. And we will endeavor to, to be prompt in, in solutioning them and, and looking at ways to assist them. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, your time is truly appreciated. Our gratitude knows no boundaries. Uh, we hope to see you at the 2022 Buy Local Summit and Expo. I just threw you under the bus in anticipation. Uh, not at all. <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> we, you know, the, the partnership has been in existence for a while and definitely will, uh, you know, uh, be uh, participating again in the future. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Papa, your parting shot. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, firstly, for unearthing my long lost friend, Kala oh. uh, <laughs> um, uh, um, a, a very important um, uh, inside gain out of this session is that um, uh, our township uh, businesses, uh, communities, players, and enterprises are ready. And they are not looking for handouts. They are looking to be part of the solutions. They are looking at grabbing this opportunity in any crisis. Uh, there is an opportunity that emerges out of the COVID crisis, out of the looting. It's how these enterprises jointly working with us as agencies uh, to take advantage of the crisis and leverage opportunities. So I'm undertaking that. Um, uh, through our enterprise development program and supplier development, we will be doing roadshows through multimedia platforms and physical engagement with enterprises and um, uh, individual businesses. So they are mostly invited to join us. And um, we'll also be sharing our annual performance plans and targets because 
part of the challenges has always been we plan for ourselves and we only know about what is our own targets. We don't involve the sector in setting up these targets and the actual beneficiaries. So we'll share these um, actual plans so that uh, enterprises are able to position themselves as solution providers to these targets that we have set. And that's the best way in which with informed ways in which what is our target, what is our underlying strategy, they are able to become meaningful suppliers and enterprises to enable us to reach a target. And as we always say, we do tourism and tourism is not just about um, nice things. It's integral to the entire value chain of logistics, transport, finance, and the like. So we look at it in that context and we're looking forward to have these enterprises enabling us to use tourism to recover our economy. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, uh, Papa. Thank you much, much appreciate. Your time is valuable to us and we appreciate that you spent it with us this morning. Uh, we will see you at the 2022 um, Delicious Festival and the Kayalami Nine Hour as we take entrepreneurs and small businesses to that massive access to market opportunities that we usually do. Uh, God willing, the pandemic is gone. We all have our jabs and we are out there uh, doing, you know, what we do best, access to market opportunities for our, you know, uh, medium-sized businesses. Thank you, Baba. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and the bank is nodding. The bank yeah. is nodding. So we're in good hands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Saki? Your parting shot, please. No, thank you, Hebe, and thanks to everyone who participated in the in the session. As I said, our role really is to finance, um, and we are there to assist as best as we can. Uh, it was a good platform for me to see as well what is happening elsewhere. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, and you know, you do know that we have a long history with GEP. Uh, we've yes. done quite a yeah, so we know where you live. We're coming ah. for you. <laughs> We're coming for you to do work with you again. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Uh, Matopane, last but uh, not least. Yes, thanks a lot uh, for the time as well, just to share some of the programs and the plans that we have for the province. Uh, we, we definitely are looking forward to working with uh, SMMEs in the township. But as Baba was saying earlier, not just, uh, you know, leading the solutions for them, but partnering with them so that the solutions that we have uh, are suitable for the type of enterprises that we have in the township. So we are quite excited. Uh, I think uh, in the next uh, few weeks or so, we will be announcing a lot of these initiatives that uh, uh, are currently being finalized uh, so that, you know, we can stop talking that a bit and, and be in the townships especially uh, once we've taken our jabs uh, and be on the ground and start rebuilding our economy, but make sure that uh, ISMEs, the townships are really integrated in the, in the value chains in our, in our country. And, and I think a lot of what uh, your colleague Elia shared um, uh, also resonates a lot with us in terms of the value chains in, in certain industries and how we can reposition those to ensure meaningful participation. But thanks a lot for, for, for the time. We're excited and hopefully we'll, We'll, we'll follow up soon on some of the initiatives that you guys are, are also working on. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. You know, in typical uh, South African lingo, they say, Gila Mileo. You know, don't want to spoil a nice, you know, parting shot. You, you don't, after all that has been said. And I just want to say thank you to my colleague, Janine, who had to step off the call in absentia for representing proudly South African. And I think the, 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 the tone of this parting shot is that no one must tell us everybody, us, the speakers and the audience that local is not lekker. There's many uh, lekker parts, uh, you know, of local that we unpack today from value chains to localization to access to market opportunities to everything. But just like any other country in the world, you know, we have our own challenges. Uh, we're not immune to that. But uh, we look forward, we forge ahead, we rebuild the economy collectively and we make the difference that we all want to see as a people um, and as South Africans. Thank you so much, colleagues. Much appreciate, appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Have a great day, Feather.
Goodbye. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Bye. Yes.